Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are checking out the 2016 Volvo V60 Cross Country All Wheel Drive T5. Now one of the cool things about this car is that there's actually a bunch of different versions and I'm going to be talking about three of the main different versions um, which you know if you want the practicality of a wagon uh, but you have you know a different desire for the car you need it for different reasons uh, they allow that. So uh, first off you can get a two liter inline four cylinder around 240 horsepower and you know that option is going to get you really good fuel efficiency and it's front wheel drive you could then opt for the cross country which is what we are in so you're going to add half a liter and another cylinder so an inline five cylinder with uh, a little bit more power um, you know you're not going to get quite the same fuel economy but the vehicle is raised up you've got more clearance and you have all-wheel drive as standard and then the third option, the R design, you add another cylinder and you add another half liter and you significantly increase the horsepower. So you're up to 325 horsepower, over 350 pound feet of torque, I believe. Uh, so a very powerful car if you want something that's fast, zero to 60, somewhere in the mid fives, I believe. Um, and there even is a Polestar option if you want something even faster than that, uh, but that's pretty hard to come across in the US. So we are in the Volvo V60 Cross Country, uh, and so because it's the Cross Country, it has all-wheel drive as standard, as mentioned, and it's got 2.6 inches more of ground clearance. So I thought, you know, rather than just driving it on the regular roads that I tested on, I'd take it, you know, to some uh, light off-roads. You know, this is pretty much just gravel with potholes, uh, but there's some snow and things like that on the ground, and there's some hills that we'll get to eventually and test out the all-wheel drive system. Under the hood is a 2.5 liter turbocharged inline five cylinder. This is the first inline five cylinder I've had in for a full review, uh, which is kind of exciting. 250 horsepower, 266 pound feet of torque uh, at a pretty low RPM as well. Now, as far as the interior, for the most part, plenty of leg room. My knees do come pretty close to the steering column, uh, and I do have the seat all the way down, but there is a lot of adjustment in the steering column. You can bring it really close, uh, or you can push it really far in if you're shorter, uh, so it works out really well as far as the steering wheel. Uh, the interior in here, visibility, looking out the front is great, looking to the sides is fine. It's a little bit narrow looking out the back, uh, but overall the visibility story in here is pretty good. Now, as far as the instrumentation in here, um, for the most part, part I like everything you have different options uh, for the display up ahead whether you want to put it in performance elegant or eco the one thing I don't like about Volvos which I've been vocal about before is just the sheer number of buttons that are all in one spot uh, in this center console area but other than that you know it certainly is a nice interior now this also has the climate package which is kind of unique uh, you know they've got the heated steering wheel they've got the heated seats they even have heated washer nozzles and one other cool thing that they do is that they have a heated windshield so there's actually heating elements uh, within the windshield they're very difficult to see so you know normally you're not going to really notice them uh, I knew what to look for so I saw it immediately when I got in the car but I rode in this with my girlfriend and I said hey looking out the front windshield uh, does anything look different to you she said no she didn't even notice at all that this heating element was in there uh, so it is pretty challenging to see uh, and that's nice and you know if you do live in a climate which that would be useful so you don't have to be out there and scraping ice and whatever you can just heat up the windshield from the inside and that is a pretty cool feature getting into to the practicality of the interior there certainly are more practical vehicles out there you know you do have a decent amount of cargo space uh, but you don't have much rear passenger leg room and you know the Volvo XC70 which is a wagon and it starts at a very similar price to this you have significantly more cargo space and you have more rear leg room so you know if you're going for total practicality the XC70 might be a better option now, Volvo calls the all-wheel drive system in this vehicle instant traction, and I've done a little bit of research into how it works, and essentially there's a clutch pack in the back, um, and what happens is that can disconnect, for the most part, from much of the engine power. So when it's not needed, if you're just cruising along the highway and it's warm, you're going to send 95% of the torque up to the front wheels and just 5% to the rear wheels. Now, the reason they call it instant traction is because the moment you turn the engine on, there's a pump back there that charges up pressure in order to lock up that clutch pack whenever you want to send power to the rear wheels. So let's say you're in a driving situation like I am now, and you know there's snow on the ground, there's mud on the ground, and if you just use the front tires, it's gonna be spinning. Well, what it does is that pressure in that pump is released into that clutch pack, it compresses up that clutch pack, and essentially you've locked up the front and rear so that you can send power to both axles. 
And so it gets that instant name because the pressure from that pump is always there from the moment you turn the car on. So anytime there's any wheel slip detected at all, it can instantly lock up that clutch pack and you can send power to both axles. So one of the first things we'll check out is the hill descent control. Uh, in order to do so, we of course need to get up a hill. So that's our first step. Seems to be doing all right getting up there. These are all season tires, uh, not all terrain or winter tires, anything like that. So, you know, not exactly ideal conditions for the tires. Ooh, there's a little bit of slip. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put it in drive, put it over into first, and then we're going to put on the hill descent control, and so it should keep us, I believe in first gear, doesn't let us uh, pass six miles per hour. So I'm just going to let off, and I'm not touching the brakes or the gas, and the car is controlling the descent which is pretty cool. And one of the other cool things about this is that I didn't know how to activate this and I was looking through the owner's manual and I couldn't find out. And there's actually a owner's manual within the car itself. Uh, so you can go to owner's manual right there. And then I just searched for hill and then it said hill descent control. Uh, and I went in and it taught me how to do it uh, right there in the car. So that's pretty cool that they also offer the manual in the car itself. So if you're out in the middle of nowhere, you don't have service, you can't look it up. Uh, you can look it up right there on the car. Okay, so now we are going to test out that instant traction system, and I'm just going to slowly go up this hill, and we'll see if we get uh, much wheel spin on the front axle, or if it actually does a nice job of preventing any wheel slip. That's the parking sensor saying I'm close to something, which is a hill. So we're just creeping over at one mile an hour. We are getting some wheel slip there, and it's not going to go over. So we'll kind of just dug out a hole. Now, you know, that's kind of worst case, and this is on all-season tires, so now let's try it just with a little bit more speed. So, of course, no problem getting over if you take it with a little bit of speed, uh, but it was having problems with traction, uh, with just uh, creeping up over it. So overall, I have enjoyed driving this. It's got good power from the inline five cylinder, decent fuel economy considering that it's a 3,900 pound vehicle and all wheel drive, you know, 20 in the city, 28 on the highway. And another thing I've been impressed with is that on this gravel road, you know, it's bumpy and it's not exactly smooth. And I haven't heard any rattling from the interior. So a nice build quality. As far as the all wheel drive system, I think it is perfectly capable for the target audience for these Volvos. I mean, I don't think people are gonna be buying a Volvo for the most extreme off-road vehicle out there and it certainly is capable I think you know if it didn't have the all-season tires and had some winter tires or some all-terrain tires on it it'd perform a little bit better out here there's probably vehicles with better differentials in the front and rear uh, but overall you know it's going to be capable to get you to a trailhead or something like that where you know someone may be wanting this for with the extra ground clearance so overall I think the all-wheel drive system is fine in this not the most capable out there of course but this is a luxury vehicle so that's not necessarily the target audience you know there's certainly more capable off-road vehicles uh, if that's what your goal is uh, but this is kind of the go anywhere luxury Volvo with you know plenty of space in the back and I do like it so thank you guys for watching and if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave those below